Hi, this is Jamie from Stonemaier Games, and I'm here today to talk about my favorite game mechanisms in Survivor, the TV show, and how they apply to tabletop games. Survivor is a show that I've watched, I think, for about 28 seasons. It's on its 30th season, and I missed a few. Um, it's a great show, and it has a lot of elements of very clever game design in it, which is uh, kind of remarkable for a TV show, much less a, a pretty popular TV show. So I wanted to talk about some of those elements that make the game design of the show really good and how they apply to games. The first one is that in Survivor, at the beginning of the game, contestants are grouped into teams. It's usually three teams of six or maybe two teams of, of nine or ten. And they're competing as teams against the other teams. And then at a certain point in the game, it shifts to an individual game where the tribes merge and everyone is competing individually from then on. I find this concept, I mean, this is a really clever concept for any, any board game where you start off cooperative and then you change into an individual game sometime during the game. Um, some games kind of blur that line as to when it happens, but I think it's clever that it's a, a dist kind of a hard line so that you get both the elements of a cooperative game and working together with people and at the end you're competing only for yourself. I think that's clever. Number two in a kind of a similar way, in many of Survivor's challenges, they have challenges where you gain a reward at the end or maybe where you gain immunity from being voted out. In many of the challenges, they start off as physical challenges, like the first half of a specific challenge is physical. And then at the end of the challenge, it's, uh, it's more mental. Maybe there's a puzzle you have to solve. And I found Survivor's done this more and more over the seasons and more and more challenges are, are built this way because it provides a built-in catch-up mechanism for people who maybe aren't as physically inclined, but they're great at puzzles. Or sometimes they'll switch it around, the puzzle will be at the beginning and they'll do the physical part at the end. Um, but usually it's the other way around. But it's such a clever catch-up mechanism where it's kind of just built into the game um, so that you really have to be good at both sides of it to stay competitive. And even if you're not, if there's someone who's really physical but not uh, inclined for the puzzle or vice versa, they can still compete, and it adds a lot of tension to, to watching and being a part of the game because you always kind of feel like you're in it. You always have a chance. Um, this has a direct correlation to board games that have built-in catch-up mechanisms um, where it, the game, certain elements of the game are, are built towards your, your faction or, or your, your country or, or whatever you're playing, um, and then at a certain point in the game where other parts of the game are built around other elements that maybe you're not as good at. A third thing that I really like about Survivor, a very clever game mechanism, is the idea of hidden immunity. Um, not hidden humidity. Hidden immunity. Um, at the end of every episode of Survivor, someone is voted out of the tribe, voted out of the game. And after the votes are cast, but before they're revealed, someone can reveal a hidden immunity idol that they found sometime during the game and all the votes cast against them are irrelevant. They don't matter. Uh, it adds a huge element of surprise and tension to every tribal council because even if you're for sure that you're going to vote somebody out, you never really know if they're going to reveal that idol or if even if someone else will give them that idol. I'm not exactly sure how this pertains to board game design, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure if there is a game that does that where people are are, are voting for someone and that person can do something to get out of the vote if they're voted out or if they're voted in, whatever the vote is. Um, some element, element of surprise there. But I think it's a really clever mechanism that could work in a game where you could spend your resources in, in your game trying to, uh, like in Survivor, you can spend your time looking for this hidden immunity idol or you can spend your time socializing with people and building up other sorts of relationships so that you don't get voted out. Kind of uh, gives you multiple paths to victory and a surprise at the at the climactic moment. The last thing, number four, on my list of favorite game mechanisms in Survivor, is that someone goes home every week. I think it, there was a time in Survivor where I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting if maybe someone didn't go home every week? Where maybe there's a way to get out of it. Um, like some weeks you just don't you don't go home. But I've come to realize that. A, people, I think, tune into Survivor knowing and wanting for someone to be voted out every week. The game would lose a lot of tension if that didn't happen. 
but also because it creates these little uh, mini games throughout Survivor. You're not just competing to be the final um, survivor, the sole survivor. You are always competing for that. That's, that's the meta game. But you're also always involved in these mini games where you're just trying to hang on a little bit longer and not get voted out. And as a viewer, it's satisfying because every week there's, uh, you know, something important's going to happen. And I, I think this applies to board games in the concept that I'll probably be talking about later too. But a concept that I've heard Mike Fitzgerald and Richard Garfield talk about as the uh, the atom of a game, which is the smallest part of a game where you can feel like you accomplished something. And I think that relates to Survivor um, and, and many other games where where something has happened, something important has happened, and then you move on and something important will happen again, and so on throughout the game. Uh, kind of like taking a trick in a, in a trick-taking game. So I, I really think that's clever of Survivor to keep that going and have someone voted out every week. If you watch Survivor and you have a, uh, a correlation between Survivor's game design and tabletop game design, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Or if you have any examples of games uh, that use these mechanisms really, really well that I discussed today, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Thanks.